We have in-person events, we have online events, and now we have hybrid events where some attendees are in person and some are online. I have a great conversation here with Brian Welsh where we talk about what it looks like to make one of those events successful as an organizer, as an attendee, finances, equipment, expertise, time, and I'm excited to share that with you here today. Let's dive in. So let's switch gears a bit. Let's maybe explore one more area. Yeah. Because it's something I know we're both familiar with. We're seeing it happen a lot in the photography industry. I know it's happening in other spaces as well, is that organizations and events are trying to experiment with a hybrid model where mm -hmm. maybe they have an in-person event, they have people in the room attending, they have a speaker that's there, <laughs> but they also want to broadcast that for people who you know can't attend in person or aren't comfortable attending in person. You know, we can kind of probably riff on this a little bit, but what are some things that you think are important to create a good hybrid experience so that, you know, the attendees who are attending remotely don't feel like they're kind of getting shortchanged or they're only getting, you know, a, a tiny part of the experience? How do yeah. You so, yes, I have thought about this. My initial answer is don't oversell what mm -hmm. the virtual experience is. Mm -hmm. It isn't the same. Right. And don't try and let them think that, Oh, you'll get the same content and experience by sitting at home. Really, it's, hey, we understand in person may not work for you. We still want to meet your needs as best we can. But also, here are the, mm -hmm. the differences. The disconnect is when people think, oh, I'll just stay home. I'll still get the content. And it's going to be as good of an experience. And when it's not, that's when mm -hmm. they find, oh, that wasn't as good as I thought. I think setting clear expectations and being really realistic, like option one in person together, the conversation after the conversation face to face will always win. But we understand that may not be right for you. And here's another option. And here's what it really looks like that eases all of that frustration. I think that's a key point. And I think organizers need to understand yeah, setting appropriate expectations for what the differences will be, even if the organizers do as amazing as a job mm -hmm. as they possibly could have, making that hybrid experience is that it's still going to be a different experience. Um, you know, with that hybrid experience, you know, as an event organizer, I mean, I do think there are a few things that you do need to think about, you know the same considerations we talked about for zoom like you know is the camera solid is the lighting good can you see the speaker well obviously you need to address those mm -hmm. with your hybrid event you need to make sure whatever you're using for the video and the audio is going to appropriately you know capture what you want to capture of the speaker of their audio you know if you have interaction in the room you need to make sure that the audio from that is getting captured in some way so if your speaker has a lapel mic great for the speaker but you won't hear questions being asked. That's something you need to consider. And you need to consider how are you going to attempt to do interactivity mm -hmm. with the remote attendees? How are they going to ask questions? Uh, if the speaker wants to kind of informally pull the audience, hey, how many of you have done X? How many of you are in this boat? How's that going to work? And these are all solvable problems, but you have to think of it in advance and ask the question so that you have the solution. Yeah, and um, be willing to put budget towards it to make it happen. That's, I think, also something I've seen is, well, we want to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. We don't have the money to do that. So we're just going to kind of go through the motions. And then again, the experience and the expectations are misaligned. So it does take intention and a little, uh, a little effort mm -hmm. to pull it off. So my recommendation is if you realize you can't pull it off, don't do it. Right. Don't offer it, even though people may be asking for it you're actually setting yourself up to fail. Mm -hmm. So it could be okay to say, we would love to have a hybrid model or a you know uh, online experience. We're just not set up for that, maybe next year. And then you have more time. Don't feel like you have to offer it if, they, if you can't deliver. Yeah, and I'll pull an analogy, you know, as a big craft beer nerd, there's a beer festival called Festival of the Dark Arts that I've attended for several years. And like everything with the pandemic, it had to shut down. And last year when, or I guess earlier this year, they were looking at having the event in February and started to plan everything. And at some point they realized we're not going to be able to do this event in a way that, you know, honors what we want this event mm -hmm. to be. And so we're going to 
cancel it one more year rather than do a poor job with yep. it. And I think that same thing applies here is if you realize that your your hybrid option isn't going to be a good experience or is going to have a bunch of pitfalls, it's probably better to just not offer any experience at all in that realm. You know, and and you know, and again, be upfront with that. And I think you hit on the key is that it's gonna cost some money too. I think yeah. sometimes people maybe think, oh well, you know, we'll, we'll do an online option and we'll charge people, you know, less money for it because, you know, it, it's the online option. It's like, well, but you still are going to have the technology needs. Mm -hmm. You're still going to have the personnel needs to operate said technology during the event. And so, you know, if you're going to do it right, my guess is, you know, there, there's as much work that goes into that as goes into facilitating the in-person event. And so. It, and if not more. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yes, yeah, sometimes the online can actually cost more in production value to pull it off than just renting a space and plugging a projector in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, being very clear on what your goals are and what you can and can't do, what you have resources for. Um, and then always think of, are you overselling the experience? And just because you can meet somebody's needs online, is that really what's best for them? Mm -hmm. uh, I love being able to give a talk in on the east coast on monday the the midwest on tuesday and the west coast on on thursday and each night sleep in my own bed mm -hmm. but i also love being on the road and uh having you know a drink after the conversation and really getting to know what that person needed uh it makes that whole trip worth it so mm -hmm. i i love both um and just be really clear and just really remember that there's somebody that's paying you money to put on an event and that event could make mean the difference between them being successful in the industry or uh, still struggling. So give it everything you've got. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think that the, the fun thing with this and, and hopefully you and I, uh, because we live close together, I mean, we could do version six, seven, eight, nine of this mm -hmm. um, and maybe revisit this conversation in six months. One of the things I think that I've been using, we just came out of a pandemic and a lot of things are unknown mm -hmm. and some things that we didn't know we could do. We now know we can do. We just don't know how to do them well yet. Right. And so give each other a lot of grace, try, be clear on expectations and a year from now we'll be better and we'll learn even more than we know right now. And so, yeah, version, version 2.0 <laughs> of, of what hybrid means. Uh, is still yet to be known, and so uh, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to revisit this in a year. This conversation, play this we're, one back, and then right. look at that one, and, and see see where we're at. And everybody's in a different place. We're all learning from different roles, whether it's as an event attendee, whether mm -hmm. it's as a speaker, whether it's as an event organizer. Every one of us is learning how to adapt to these new models of events that maybe we didn't frequently participate in in the past. So. If nothing else, over the last couple of years, I think we've all learned that plans change and we can mm -hmm. adapt. And I think that's a lesson that we can take going forward and just keep applying. You know, let's adapt and make it as good as we can, given whatever circumstances we have. Yeah, that's good. So good call. All right. Thanks again, Brian. This was a fun chat. All right. Thanks again to Brian for that conversation. Be sure to subscribe down below. I'll be back here with another new video for photographers in just a few days. I am the Tech Photo Guy. We talk all things photography, modern technology, and otherwise. Take care, everyone.